A few days ago, I made a video about how you can easily add a startup sound to your Linux desktop, meaning that when you log into your desktop environment or window manager, you get a quick five to 10 second little audio clip, you know, a sound clip that plays, letting you know, hey, your system has finished booting and you are now logged in. These were very common back in the old days of computers, Windows computers, the old um, Apple computers back in the day, they all had startup sounds because back then your computers often took a while to, to boot up. Sometimes you would wait a minute or two for a computer to finally boot up and actually log you into your desktop. So it was nice having a sound effect there to let you know that your computer finally finished booting. Now these sound effects are not as common on Linux desktops and really especially modern computing a lot of even Windows users now, you know, they just disable all system sounds anyway, but I kind of like it. So what I wanted to do today was I wanted to add some system sounds to DTOS, which is my Arch Linux post installation script. For those of you not familiar with that, DTOS is a script I wrote that installs a whole bunch of my uh, custom programs and packages, and it gives you my Xmonad desktop environment. Yeah, for those of you that have not seen my desktop before, you know, it's, this is the Xmonad window manager, and it's going to come with uh, various programs and config files of mine. And one of the things I wanted to add were these startup sounds, shutdown sounds, and various other system sounds. So I'm going to package up some sound files. I'm going to create a Arch Linux package. I'm going to go ahead and package this for the DTOS core repository and go ahead and, and see if this actually works. Then I'll run through a quick installation of DTOS to see if everything works correctly. So what I've done is I went to a website that allowed you to download like free audio files, little short audio files. And I found a bunch of computer uh, startup sounds, shutdown sounds, uh, uh, files that, uh, sounded like drawers opening, drawers closing, things like that. And what I did is I created a new repository over on my GitLab. My GitLab, by the way, is gitlab.com slash DWT1. And if we view all of my repositories, I created a new one here called DTOS-Sounds. And in this, there are about eight MP3 files. These are short, you know, just a few seconds long, various uh, sound effects here. And other than that, it has a readme and a license here, really not much to this repo, but this is going to serve us as a repository for our uh, package to actually download these MP3s. So now that I have this repository, what I'm gonna do, let me go back to an empty workspace here. The first thing I need to do is create a package build for what will eventually be an installable program that will be called DTOS-Sounds. So I'm gonna open up Emacs here and zoom in and I'm gonna navigate to where I have this particular repository here called GitLab-Repos and this is where I have all of my various GitLab repos. And the two repos that I'm gonna be working with here are DTOS-PackageBuild uh, and DTOS-Core-Repo. So DTOS-Core-Repo is where all of the binaries are. This is actually the DTOS Core repository. It's where when you install packages for DTOS, they actually get pulled from this repository. But how are these binaries that go in DTOS-Core-Repo made? Well, they're made by using the package builds that are hosted in DTOS-PackageBuild. So let's go into DTOS-PackageBuild. And in this repo, we have x86 underscore 64. That's the architecture for all of these packages. And this is a list of all of the packages that I package for DTOS. So this is everything that I maintain myself. And I created this one here called DTOS-Sounds. Now that's a directory. If I go in this directory, the only thing in this directory are two files. There is a package build and a dot install file. The dot install file is not necessary. It's kind of an optional file, but what I really need is a package build. And I've already created a package build. I just used a standard template that I use for all my packages. Arch package builds are essentially a shell script. I've done videos on how to build Arch packages before. Check some of my past videos on that. But you can think of this as a shell script. Everything at the top here are setting various 
variables. The first thing I do is I give package name a name, and this package name is going to be DTOS-Sounds. So when you do a sudo pacman-s to install this program, it will be DTOS-Sounds. That is the name of it. Give it a description. The architecture is x86-64. Now that could be other architectures if you were building, I don't know, 32-bit of packages or ARM packages, but everything I do is x86-64. The really important thing to have here is URL equals, and this URL equals should be the uh, place where the source code for this program, or in this case, it's not really a program. You can think of it as kind of like um, a library, you know, it's just where the files that we're pulling down are going to be hosted. And of course, they're hosted at gitlab.com slash dwt1 slash dtos dash sounds. That's the name of the repository. As far as depends, this won't have any depends because it's not even really a program. We're just downloading some mp3 files. Make depends, well, that's going to be git because we're going to use git to uh, git clone this repository. So I need a make depends of git. And then the source, this variable here is important, and that's going to be git plus URL. So git plus, and then this string here. I mentioned there is also an install file. The install equals uh, package name dot install, so dtos-sounds.install, which was the file I, you saw earlier was this here. And all this is, this particular file, it echoes some output when you install this at the terminal. So if I do sudo pacman dash capital S DTOS dash sounds and install this package, it's going to print out this here to the terminal. So it's gonna have this little box around it and it's gonna say sound files were placed in slash opt slash DTOS dash sounds. That just gives the, the user, whoever installed this, a little useful information. That way they know exactly where those MP3s were put. Let me kill that buffer there. And let's go back into package build. And then after we get through declaring all of these variables here, assigning these variables, then the bottom is really the script. And this is usually where you're going to have two, three, maybe four uh, shell functions that are defined. Now, this is very simple here, what I'm doing. I have a function here for assigning the package version, meaning every time I do a push to my GitLab to DTOS-sound, so every time I update something, meaning every time I add an MP3 or edit an MP3 or remove an MP3, anytime I do something with that repository using Git, then this will automatically update the version number for DTOS-sounds based on the count head here. This is just a, a, a easy way to automatically always update your version numbers with your packages. Otherwise, every time I do an update, I would have to manually update the package build myself to actually specify an exact version of a program. I, I don't want to do that. But the real installation portion of the script is this here. And all of this does is it CDs into a directory that's going to be called DTOS-sounds, and it's going to install a directory, and it's going to uh, put everything in slash opt slash DTOS-sounds. So we're going to put it in the slash opt directory. That's a directory on your Linux system. That's typically where you'll throw programs that you compiled yourself, built from source yourself, things that weren't installed traditionally through your package manager, often they go in slash opt. I'm putting DTOS-sounds in slash opt just for convenience. I think that's a logical place to put those MP3 files. Then other than that, the, the install command here with 644 permissions, it's just going to install all the MP3 files that are in the source directory. So the git clone of my repository is going to put them in slash opt slash DTOS-sounds. And then finally, it's going to run the install command for license. It's going to move the license to user share licenses, DTOS dash sound slash license. Then it's going to install the readme to user share doc DTOS dash sounds slash readme dot org. For those of you that are new to packaging programs for Linux, you know, for like these Arch package builds, the install command uh, install is very similar to like a copy command. And that's essentially what it's doing is it's copying things over from the source directory over to, you know, someplace on the file system. One thing with Arch package builds is when you're installing programs, and so when you're putting these files on the file system somewhere, they actually have to be somewhere in the root file system. They cannot be in a user's home directory. That's just not allowed. That's why I can't, for example, put these in slash home slash whatever username slash 
DTOS dash sounds, right? It has to be like a top level directory like in the root file system. That's why I'm putting it in slash opt slash DTOS dash sounds. So now that I've got this package build, we could actually build this package. Let me uh, go back a couple of levels here. To So this is all of the package builds. All these directories here are package names in these directories. There is a package build for each one of these programs. So let me rebuild the DTOS core repository. So I'm going to actually open a terminal for this. And let me cd into this particular directory here, DTOS dash package build. If I do an ls, I've got two scripts here. One is cleanup and one is build packages. Cleanup is just a script to remove anything in these directories that is not a package build or not a dot install file because anything else in these directories is just garbage that needs to go away. So let me run that and then finally let me run the build packages script. What build packages is going to do is going to take each one of those package builds and create a binary for that package build. So let me run that. It should ask for a sudo password at some point because we are signing these packages and it's generating the binaries for each one of these packages assuming the script runs without failure. This usually takes uh, about five to ten minutes to build all of these binaries. And while that is running, let me switch back to the browser. So you saw DTOS-sounds. That's, again, just a repository that contains the MB3 files. And then if I go back to all of my repositories, there is DTOS-package build. Again, this is just where all of the package builds for each of these programs is located. For example, DM scripts. There's the package build. You can read the package builds for for everything that is hosted in the DTOS core repository. But DTOS-package build is just the package builds, right? There is a different repository for the actual binaries, and that is DTOS-core-repo. And this is actually what goes in your pacman.conf when you add the DTOS core repository to your system if you wanted to to actually be able to use this repository you add dtos-core-repo to your pacman.conf and in this you have once again a directory called x86 underscore 64 but in this directory instead of having a bunch of package builds you actually have a bunch of .pkg .tar .zst files those are the binaries that is actually what pacman uses to actually install these particular programs, for example, there is the binary package for DM scripts. So if I run sudo pacman dash capital S DM scripts, you know, it's actually going to connect to the DTOS core repo and grab that binary. And that's what it actually uses to uh, install DM scripts. So I hope that makes sense. I just wanted to let you know about those repositories if you want to check any of this stuff out. Let me get back to the terminal. It is still generating those packages. All right, I stepped away for a few minutes while those binaries were being generated. So that was uh, DTOS dash package build. Now, if I go back into uh, Dear Ed, the file manager inside Emacs here, and I just click on one of these packages like DM scripts. Now, in this directory, there's the package build that was here, but now there are these two files here the pkg.tar.zst and the pkg.tar.zst.sig. So this is the binary and this is the signature file that was generated right from that script, that build packages script. Now these files, these need to be removed from this package build repository and they need to be moved over to the DTOS core-repo repository. So let me close that window. Now let me move back through directory here and now let's go into dtos-core-repo and in this repository there is one script build-db.sh so build database and what this script does if I opened it you guys don't really need to know what the script does but what it does is it goes into dtos-package build and grabs all the binaries and all the sig files and moves them over to dtos-core-repo and then finally, it actually builds a database of those that Pac-Man can use to actually install programs with. So let me close Emacs here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up a second terminal because I want to keep the terminal that has DTOS-package build open because I'm going to need it again here in just a second. But I'm going to CD this time into DTOS-core-repo. 
and I'm going to run this script build-database.sh. This takes just a few seconds. So it moved all of the binaries from d2s-package build to d2s-core-repo. Now what I want to do is go back to d2s-package build and I'm going to run the cleanup script to get rid of everything that's not a package build because there may be some extra files, uh, some uh, garbage laying around after generating those binaries. And now I'm going to make a push to both d2s-package build and d2s-core repo. So if I did a get status here, you can see we modified various files here. I'm going to do git add-u, or add everything that has been updated. So we have several package builds that were updated, meaning they were uh, their version number typically is what has changed. And then I'm going to do git commit, and I'm going to do updating package builds as a commit message. And then finally git push. All right, and now we have pushed all the new package builds, and now let's do the same thing for git core repo. So if I do a git status on this, let me make that full screen, we have a ton of stuff. A lot of things were modified, a lot of things were deleted, and then there's a couple of new files, some untracked files here. So what I'm going to do on this one, I'm going to do git add asterisk, meaning git add everything in this repository. And then I'm going to do git commit in this message. I'm going to do updating database instead of updating page builds. And then finally, I'm going to do a git push of the core repo. And this push typically takes a little time because these binary packages got a little size to them. And now we're done with those two repositories. Now let me go back because there is one more repository we need to play with. So if I go back to my GitLab, I have a repository here called simply DTOS. And this repository is the DTOS script. This is the script you download to actually install DTOS. So it's what it does, it adds the DTOS core repository to your pacman.conf. It does this for you. And then it installs a whole bunch of packages, many of them from the standard Arch repositories, most of them though from the DTOS core repository, you know, my own custom uh, config files and packages and stuff. So that is DTOS, the script. And what I need to do is I need to change one thing here, the DTOS script, other than the script itself has this list here, package list.txt, which is a list of all the packages that get installed. We need to add a new package because we need to add DTOS-sounds to the package list. So let me open up Emacs again. Now let me navigate to the DTOS repo and I'm going to go to package list and I'm just going to go down here and add DTOS dash sounds to the package list. I'm going to write and quit that. Now I need to go into the DTOS repo here. I'm going to go into the terminal here and we need to do a get add dash u for get add updated files because we updated that package list. Then I'm going to do a git commit and I'm going to say add dtos-sounds to package list and let's do a git push and that is everything I needed to do there's one other thing I did and I did this off camera if I go into my xmonad config let me open up my xmonad config file here and zoom in let me go down to the bottom where I have some key bindings here I edited my xmonad config and this is already going to be updated as part of DTOS so when you guys install DTOS you will actually get this new xmonad config here. You will see I have a new section in the config right above the key bindings for the sounds. I specify a directory where those mp3 files are and I specify slash op slash DTOS dash sounds. And then I assign a startup sound. I just create this variable. I could have named it anything, but I'm going to call it startup sound. And then I have another one for shutdown sound and I have another one for D menu sound. And you see I define these as sound directory plus plus. So, you know, this path plus and then the name of the mp3 so for startup sound i did startup-01.mp3 shutdown sound is shutdown 
menu-01.mp3 and the dmenu sound is going to be menu-01.mp3. Now most people are going to be annoyed by having this dmenu sound assigned here. That means every time you run dmenu you're going to get a sound. You're not going to get it right now even though I do have this working on my computer because I'm recording. Uh, the audio streams are, are not going to a place where you guys are going to hear it, but you, you will hear it here in a second because we're going to do this inside a virtual machine here in a minute. I'm actually going to run through a quick installation of DTOS. But now that I have these variables assigned for these shutdown sounds, all I needed to do is add these shutdown sounds to some key bindings. For example, this key binding here, let me do a copy and I'm going to do a paste here. What this key binding was originally was the standard uh, exit command from xmonad. So when I do mod shift Q, it quits out of xmonad, right? And how that is done by running this command here, IO exit success. It just kills xmonad. That is all that command does. Now, many people don't know this, but you can actually uh, run multiple commands with a key binding in xmonad by using the sequence function here. And the way this works is you would do sequence underscore is the name of the function and then you need to do in brackets you know a command of some kind comma and then another command of some kind comma another command whatever and then the ending brackets and then of course the ending parentheses because we had a parentheses at the beginning here but that is a very easy way to have uh, more than one command run inside uh, xmonad so you can see the example I've got here, where the very first command, you know, what is in front of this comma here, is spawn my sound player plus plus shut down sound. Now my sound player, let me go to the top of the document where I have a lot of variables assigned, such as my terminal, my browser, yada yada yada. I have a new one here called my sound player and the sound player is going to be FF play. So this is a command line audio player. Uh, it's there on any system that has FF MPEG installed. Everybody, everybody that uses Linux should have FF MPEG installed. So that is the command and I have a space at the end of that because that's very important because it's going to be F play dash no display dash auto exit space. And then it's going to use this path plus, you know, the name of the MP3. But there needs to be a space, obviously, between the path and the uh, variable for the my sound player. That's why I had that space there. It's very important to leave that. So let me undo what I did here because I don't want to make any changes to this. I've already uh, made these changes and pushed these. So let's run through a quick installation of DTOS. So let me switch to this workspace here where I typically run virtual machines. And I've got this clone of Manjaro KDE. Actually, I haven't cloned it yet. This is this is an updated version of Manjaro KDE. I updated it this morning, but let me duplicate it because I often use these Manjaro VMs for testing with DTOS. So I'm going to do a clone, meaning it's going to make a copy of it. This could take a few minutes. So now that I have this VM cloned of Manjaro KDE, let me log into the Plasma desktop. And I'm logged in here to the KDE Plasma desktop. Now, the very first thing I'm going to do is open a terminal. So for those of you that want to check out DTOS, I still kind of consider it beta software. Install it at your own risk. If it's your very first time trying out DTOS, I suggest doing what I'm doing. Try it out in a virtual machine. Now, Technically, it should work on any Arch Linux base distribution. I often use Manjaro KDE for my testing, but because there are so many Arch Linux based distributions and they do vary from, you know, every distribution does things slightly differently. I can't verify that DTOS works on every single Arch based distro, but theoretically it should. Now, first, let me go ahead and run a git clone at https colon slash slash gitlab.com slash dwt1 that's my gitlab username slash dtos because that's the repo we need to clone now if i do an ls you should see a new directory in your home directory dtos that's the cloned repository so cd into dtos if you do an ls you should see 
a few files here, but you have this executable script here, DTOS. So what you want to do is do a period slash DTOS to actually run the script. It's going to ask for a sudo password because you need sudo privileges to install and remove software. And you get a welcome screen. Just hit OK three or four times to get past the welcome messages here. Basically, it's just warning you, hey, do you really want to do this? It's kind of beta software. Yes. Begin installation. It adds DTOS core repo to your pacman.conf, and then it starts installing a whole bunch of packages, many of them from the Arch repo, many of them from the D DTOS core repo. And it looks like it is finished installing the 361 packages that it needed to install using Pacman. Then once it gets through this, it should begin the Doom Emacs installation. Yeah, it's cloning Doom Emacs now. The Doom Emacs installation actually takes the bulk of the time for this script to run. All right, and it looks like it finished the installation of Doom Emacs. Once again, it's asking for a sudo password. Then it's going to recompile xmonad for us. And the very last part of the DTOS installation script, it asks, what do you want your user's default shell to be? You have fish, bash, zsh as options. I'm going to choose the first option, which uh, really is the default is fish. And now it's going to ask, do we want to go ahead and reboot? That way we can go ahead and log in to DTOS. And yes, let's reboot the machine. And we come to our login manager and let's go ahead and well before we log in we need to change from plasma over to xmonad and let's see if everything looks good. You get the startup sound right? <laughs> so that DTOS sounds was definitely installed properly. I'm sure you guys heard that. Let's run a xrander-s 1920 by 1080 to get proper screen resolution here. And let's, oh, you can hear the D menu sound. <laughs> if I restart uh, Xmonad one more time, will I get the startup sound again? No. And that is by design. If I actually open my config, it doesn't look like the Emacs daemon is running. Actually, it looks like Emacs still has one more thing to install the emoji package. Now, let me close that. Go to a terminal. I'll just start the Emacs daemon with slash user slash bin slash Emacs dash dash daemon and then an ampersand because it's going to need to be a, a background process. It looks like the Emacs daemon is going to ask once again to download the emoji images. I don't know why this is a problem the very first time using Emacs on DTOS whatever reason the daemon does not automatically start it has to do with this package that it has to install first and it says starting emacs daemon but it looks like it looks like it hung a little bit there let's see if it actually no it started the emacs daemon because the way that loaded that's that's the emacs client so now i'm going to navigate to in my home directory dot xmonad so you have a hidden directory in your home directory called .xmonad and in that directory is where you'll find the readme.org and the xmonad.hs so if you use org then the readme file is the one you want to edit if you don't use org xmonad.hs is the file you want to edit but I'm going to use the readme the readme file actually outputs to xmonad.hs so let me zoom in and let me go to auto start the startup hook here and you will see why I get the D menu sound all the time, but the startup sound when I restart Xmonad, it only happens the very first time I log in. It's because in my startup hook, I spawn once my sound player plus the startup sound, meaning only do it the one time, right? So if I actually want to hear the startup sound again, I would actually have to quit out of xmonad here and that was the shutdown sound i don't know if you guys heard that there was a shutdown sound it was very fast though you could barely hear it because it shut down so quick there's the startup sound again and a whole bunch of stuff starts up that really shouldn't start up here because uh there's still some manjaro kde applications that are starting up which are not a part of the normal dtos so that is uh, DTOS sounds, those of you that are running DTOS, it should be available for you uh, in the repository. Just do a sudo pacman-s 
DTOS sounds. So, you know, this is my physical machine here. I'm out of the host machine. So if I do a sudo pacman dash s dtos dash sounds, assuming you have the DTOS core repository as part of your pacman.conf. Yeah, there it is. DTOS dash core dash repo slash DTOS dash sounds. That package will be available for you now. Now that you still won't hear the sounds for startup and shutdown and when you open D menu and all that unless you also install the latest Xmonad config that has those sounds as part of the key bindings. And how you would do that is you would do sudo pacman dash s DTOS dash xmonad to get the latest config files and those config files will be placed in a folder called slash etsy slash dtos go in slash etsy slash dtos and look for dot xmonad you know the same directory that should be in your home directory just copy all those files over to the home directory to get the latest config i don't need that though so i will decline that update so a little bit of a rambly, kind of random video today. You guys saw me working on building this this one package really for DTOS, and it took a, a while. You know, there were several steps that I have to go through uh, to actually do this stuff. It's one of those things I often tell people, if you see package maintainers, like if you're at a Linux conference or you're just talking to people and they mention that they happen to be a package maintainer for whatever Linux distribution they happen to work with, give those people a hug because maintaining packages is actually a rather tedious chore. It's not hard, right? But it is time consuming and the people that do it, especially the people that do it just out of the goodness of their heart, they don't do it for any fortune or fame, right? They just do it for the greater good. I salute each and every one of you guys. Now, before I go, I need to thank a few special people. I need to thank the producers of the show. Devin, Dustin, Gabe, James, Maxim, Matt, Michael, Mitchell, Paul, Scott, Wes, Alan, Armor, Dragon, Chuck, Commander, Angry, Dai, Yokai, Dylan, George, Lee, Lennox, Ninja, Mars, Drum, Mike, Erjan, Alexander, Peace, Arch, and Fedor, Polytech, Reality, Tzor, Let's Red, Prophet, Stephen, Willie, these guys, they're my highest tiered patrons over on Patreon without these guys. Today's video would not have been possible. The show is also brought to you by each and every one of these fine ladies and gentlemen all of these names you're seeing on the screen these are all my supporters over on patreon because i don't have any corporate sponsors i depend on you guys if you want to see more videos about linux free and open source software building packages <laughs> subscribe to distrotube over on patreon peace guys